In 1972, the stock market was on a true melt up. The S&P 500 had rallied 50% from the lows it had made just a couple of years earlier, going almost parabolic in the first half of 1973. And then all of a sudden, food prices began to break out. The price of wheat that you see here quadrupled over the course of the next two to three years. As a wave of inflation hit the US economy, it quickly ended the parabolic move up in the S&P 500 and led to a vicious bear market that saw the S&P 500 move down by a staggering 50%. Fast forward to today, the stock market has rallied around 50% from the recent low in 2022, as inflation in the United States has come down from 9% all the way to 3% after the largest spike in over 40 years. The S&P 500 is now at 5,200 points, which is the exact target that we had for the S&P 500 back in 2022 when we called for inflation to come down. But food prices are now rising for the first time since 2022. Agricultural food prices are up 20% relative to last year, which is the fastest increase in agricultural commodity prices we've seen since 2020. Egg prices have jumped around 50% since the beginning of the year. The price of orange juice has jumped 81% since January of 2023. And the price of cocoa has jumped a staggering 284% since January of 2023. The Agricultural Commodity Index, DBA, has surged recently, breaking out above a very important technical level and is now now actually at levels not seen in over a decade. So are these skyrocketing food prices a sign that the market is about to go down like in 1974? In the past, when we've seen agricultural commodity prices rise like today, it has typically translated into higher inflation. In fact, when we shift forward commodity prices by a few months, you can see they actually tend to be a leading indicator of where inflation is going. So at a first glance, it seems that food prices today are telling us we're going to see higher levels of inflation. Of course, to anyone investing in the stock market, we don't need to go through why inflation is a bad thing. Higher levels of inflation are often associated with a lower stock market. The inflation spikes in the 1970s led the market lower. And of course, more recently, the spike in inflation in 2022 led the market lower. But low levels of inflation are actually typically a, a pretty good time to be buying the stock market. You can see all of these moments where inflation was low, stocks were either bottoming or were about to experience a large rally. And that makes sense. When inflation is low, the Federal Reserve can open the printing presses and stimulate the economy and financial markets as much as they want. And high inflation means the central bank has to stop stimulating the economy to avoid fueling hyperinflation. So if food prices are actually suggesting there's a surge in inflation that's happening right now, it, it could stop the stock market rally dead in its tracks, but that doesn't seem like that's actually what's in front of us. You see this big rise in agricultural commodity prices is actually very unusual. It's being driven by just one component of this ETF, and that component is cocoa. Cocoa prices are up 146% since January of 2024, more than doubling in price since the start of the year. January 2024, by the way, is the exact moment where DBA started started to rise significantly. But when we compare DBA to some of its other components, we see that wheat, for example, has been declining since January of 2024, not at all suggesting we're seeing a huge amount of inflation in food prices. The price of corn has also declined significantly since January, and so has the price of rice. And we can probably argue that wheat, corn, and rice are better components to follow than the price of cocoa. So at a first glance, it seems that this rise in agricultural commodity prices is actually just being fueled by cocoa. Generally, when we want to know how strong a breakout is on an ETF like DBA, we want to see as many of its components actually participating in that breakout. If just one component is pushing the price higher, it has a much higher chance of actually failing and going in the opposite direction as soon as the concerns around cocoa begin to ease. And that's exactly what we think is going to happen. The price of wheat is a much more more accurate representation of where inflation is going. You can see that just wheat has almost a perfect relationship with the inflation rate in the United States. And when we zoom out, you can see the inflation waves of the 1970s saw wheat prices rise significantly. That's also what happened during the inflation wave that we saw in 2022. So what we're seeing on wheat today doesn't look at all like an inflationary wave. And that's actually a pretty good thing for the market right now. What does look a little bit more worrying is the price of silver that's currently bringing breaking out. Now we added silver to our list of trade ideas back in November. It's currently up around 20% since then. And we think this breakout could actually have a lot 
more room to run. And when we zoom out, we can see that rising silver prices is something that we also saw in the 1970s and 80s during those waves of inflation. So a lot of people are pointing to this strength that we're seeing in silver and saying this is evidence for another wave of inflation. But when you look at the period between 2000 and 2011, we also saw periods where silver prices were rising incredibly quickly without any type of inflation. In fact, we even briefly saw deflation during that period. That's much more similar to the environment that we're expecting looking forward. When you look at something called the producer price index, it is currently in deflation. This is basically a measure of wholesale prices. And when we zoom out, you can see during the 1970s, you saw the producer price index hover between around 5% and 20% on a very sustained basis. Today, producer prices are declining relative to last year. So a substantially different behavior to the 1970s and much more similar to what we saw between 1999 and 2011. And as we just saw, that's actually a great thing for the stock market. You can see every time the PPI goes into deflation typically means the market is going to be moving higher. And that's exactly what's been happening today. Although when we look at what happened in 2007, yes, we did see the market continue to rally for another six months, but that was eventually reversed and the stock market moved a lot lower. We could say the same thing about 1999 right here. That was a great moment for stocks in the short term, but the 2001 bear market quickly reversed those short term gains. And we can say the exact same thing about 1987, but that was a great opportunity in the near term for the next few months, but the 1987 crash quickly reversed those short term gains. And that's about where we think we are right now. In the short term, the stock market is currently pulling back of technical support. This is a pullback that we've been calling for. The stock market was overextended right here. It was showing signs of excessive leverage and complacency at its peak. And we've been calling for the market to revisit its 50 day moving average that you see right here, which seems to be what is happening on the market today. But the broader structure of the S&P 500 today looks bullish. It has broken out of a large price channel. And so from a technical standpoint, it seems likely that it's going to be bouncing off of these levels of support and possibly seeing another rally. This is really the technical structure that we're using as our bias right now. If these levels hold, we'll see another rally higher. If it fails to hold above these levels of support, that's a bad technical signal because there's actually not much support for the S&P 500 until around 4,800 points, which is this zone where the market consolidated back in January of 2024. Now, this is not our base case because when we look at initial claims, they're still trending lower, not showing any signs that a recession is imminent. We think that's coming more in the second half of 2024. The only thing that could really trigger a larger move down in the market right now is if oil spikes because of the war in the Middle East. We're following this and many other trading opportunities with our incredible community of members at GameofTrades.net.